at all level speaker and honorable members, this is the justification for a resolution of parliament to pay tribute to the late honorable Nyirabashi Sisara Mateke, the state uh, minister for defense and veteran affairs in charge of defense, a politician, educationist, a uh, philosophist, uh, entrepreneur, and a community leader. Let me speak, Saturday 7th September 2024 was a, a dark morning for the country as we learned of the sudden dim, demise of the State Minister for Defense and Veteran Affairs in charge of defense, a politician, educationist, entrepreneur, and uh, a community leader. Honorable Nyirabasisi Sara Mateke succumbed to heart complications at Mengo Hospital where she had gone for treatment. Honorable members, the late Nyirabasis Sara Mateke was born on 15th July 1974 and grew up from Bogahe village, Nyakabingo Parish, Chahi Sabu County, in Kisoro district, to a veteran politician, the Honorable Dr. Firmon Mateke and Joy. Wanfizi Mateke, a professional teacher. At Honorable Speaker, she was married to the late Nzeimana Alex and survived uh, with, uh, with one child. At Honorable Speaker, the late Sarah Nirabasisi started her academic journey from Seseme Primary School where she completed her primary living examinations before joining her secondary level of education. She joined Mary Hill High School for her Uganda Certificate of Education and completed in 1987. She studied and sat for her Uganda Advanced Certificate of Education at Kampala Comprehensive High School in 1991. Sarah joined Bugema University for a degree program, graduating with a Bachelor of Business Administration in 1995. Sarah was admitted at Law Development Center, Kampala, for an administrative law course and graduated with an uh, with administrative law certificate in the year 2000. Uh, determined to excel, Sarah enrolled at Uganda Christian University and graduated with a postgraduate diploma in public administration and management in the year 2007. Sarah furthered her academic achievements and enrolled for a master's degree at Ugema University and graduated with a master's in public health in the year 2017. Let honorable speaker and honorable members, Sarah was a bright and focused student who struggled to attain high goals. Her achievement for achievement has inspired many girls and youth today to further their education, to join politics, business and other gainful employment to cause development, developmental change for this country. Let Honorable Speaker and Honorable Members, Nyirabasi Sara Mateke has been a dedicated patriot in serving her country and the people of Kisoro in particular after leaving as a role model from her useful days, from her useful days. She ran a family business dealing in timber production and transportation. She served in various capacities in the political, corporate, and public service arenas 
during her tour of service and life, which include the following. At Honorable Speaker and colleagues, allow me at this uh, point to thank His Excellency the President for giving uh, the right Honorable Sarah Mateke an opportunity to serve in the capacity of Minister. His Excellency the President appointed Sarah Mateke as a Minister of State for Defense and Veteran Affairs in charge of defense from March uh, 2020, from March 2024, and has been involved in the formulation of better policies in the sector before her demise. Honorable members, as a member of the 11th Parliament, His Excellency the President appointed Sarah as State Minister of Gender, Labor and Social Development in charge of youth and children affairs with her experience of championing the interests of the girl and boy children to accessing formal education in boarding schools through her Nirabasis Foundation, organized and empowering women into development programs. The Honorable Speaker Sarah Mateke Nirabasisi has been the district uh, woman representative for Kisoro district in the 11th Parliament of Uganda uh, from the year 2021 till her demise. She was a member of the 9th Parliament and served diligently on various committees of Parliament between the year 2011 to 2016. Sala served as a, a chairperson, board of trustees, Makerere Metropolitan International University from 2014 till her last breath. At Honorable Speaker, she has been serving as a chairperson Board of Directors, Makere Metropolitan uh, Management Institute from 2014 to her time of death. She has been a hardworking and committed civil servant. When she was uh, serving in the Kisoro District Local Government, one as a senior assistant clerk in the services, assistant town clerk, in the services of Kisolo Town Council between the year 2005 to 2011. She was a personnel officer in the services of Kisolo Town Council between the year 2001 to 2005. Let Honorable Speaker and Honorable Members, as we pay tribute to our foreign Honorable colleague, allow me to state that non-communicable diseases is another threat to our society, lobbying our country of game changers in the development of our country like Honorable Sarah Mateke. The government of Uganda has developed strategies and taken steps in combating this vice. Here below are some specific steps taken by government in communicable diseases not limited to the policy, plan, policy and planning. The government of Uganda has developed a national non-communicable disease policy that is of 2015 and a national non-communicable diseases control program and integrated non-communicable diseases into the health sector development plan that is of 2015, 2016 to 2019 and 2020 and allocates funds for, for it annually. The health care service delivery government integrated non-communicable uh, disease services into the primary health care services and has established non-communicable disease clinics and specialized treatment centers. Uh, continuing to train health uh, care workers on non-communicable disease management. At Honorable Speaker and Honorable Colleagues, uh, uh, public awareness and education. The government of Uganda has and is continuing to conduct 
public awareness campaign on communicable disease risk factors and prevention. So far, we have launched the Harris, the Harris Heart Africa initiative to promote a cardiovascular health. Government is in a partnership with uh, civil society organizations to promote non-communicable disease awareness. Let honorable speaker and honorable colleagues, surveillance and research. On surveillance and research, we have uh, conducted a non-communicable diseases risk factor survey of 2014 to gather data on non-communicable disease, uh, diseases prevalence. Government has established a national non-communicable disease diseases surveillance system supported the research on non-communicable disease, diseases and their risk factors. That one I will speak on partnership and collaboration. The government of Uganda is collaborating with international organizations. For example, World Health Organization, UNICEF, and, and we are partnering with NGOs such as Uganda Heart Association, Uganda Cancer Society, engaging, we are also engaging the private sector to promote health lifestyles and products. At Honorable Speaker, we have other initiatives. Under this, we have launched the Uganda uh, Physical Activity and Sports Policy, even at Parliament here. We have introduced the national guidelines for management of non-communicable diseases, that is of 2018, we have established a national non-communicable disease coordinating mechanisms. Honorable Speaker and Honorable Colleagues, these steps and many other initiatives demonstrate the government's commitment to addressing non-communicable diseases. However, a concerted efforts still needed to effectively combat the non-communicable diseases in the country. Let Honorable Speaker and Honorable Colleagues, as we mourn and celebrate the life of a distinguished person who devoted her life in serving her country, she has been widely appreciated as a passionate human rights crusader and empowerment of girls, youth, and women for social development as well as social, political, and economic justice. Honorable members, that honorable speaker and honorable members, I wish to extend government's profound sympathies to the family, relatives, friends, colleagues, and the, Bafu, the Bafumbira community and the people of Uganda. May the Almighty God grant her soul, her soul eternal rest for God and my country. Thank you. Thank you so much, Vic. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, I rise to second the motion paying tribute to our colleague, the Honorable Sarah Mateke Nyirabashiti, the woman representative for Kisoro District and Minister of State for Defense and Veteran Affairs. Her sudden demise is deeply saddening on behalf of the opposition in Parliament and on my own behalf, I wish to extend deepest condolences to the bereaved family and the people of Kisoro District whom she served as leader. It's unfortunate that um, she has died at her prime due to a non-communicable disease, as we have been told, her prime being 50 years. Robo Sarah was generally calm and reserved, not too outspoken, like the quintessential politician. When she previously served as Minister of State for Youth and Children Affairs, she exuded passion. Passion for her role as Minister for Youth and Children. 
Whenever we pressed her hard regarding issues of youth and children, including their welfare, government programs and promises to this peculiar part of the population, she always responded with a lot of composure. Even when you did not agree with Honorable Sarah Mateke, it was difficult to feud with her because of her calmness. She's the kind of person who would disarm you with her gentility. We've also learned that she was undertaking certain projects in our community. We pray and hope that those projects will live on after her as part of her legacy. Honorable Speaker, my colleague, the Honorable Minister, has mentioned, of late the vice of corruption has continued to eat up our country, being perpetrated by leaders at different levels and civil servants. I did not hear of the Honorable Sarah Mateke's name embroiled in any corruption scandal during her service in government. And if there was one, then I probably missed it. As we send her off, may we all as leaders reflect on the imperativeness of not getting involved in corruption, but also using our positions and platforms to fight corruption, which has become an impediment to Uganda's progress. Honorable Speaker, when the Honorable Sarah was transferred to the Ministry of Defense and Veteran Affairs as Minister of State, I saw an interview of her on TV a couple of days into office, expressing her desire to serve the Ministry of Defense, the men and women in uniform, and the country at large with commitment in this new role that she was taking on. Unfortunately, again, as Honorable Both has mentioned, the Honorable Sarah has passed on just a short while after getting into this office, so she probably has not been able to achieve all that she set out to achieve. As we mourn the passing on of the minister laying before us here, let us commit to improving the welfare of the men and women in uniform. We must resolve, right, Honorable Speaker and colleagues, the question of salary enhancement for the UPDF, which falls under the ministry she was serving, and by extension, police and prisons. The living conditions of our men and women in uniform continue to be appalling. We must address this long overdue concern. Right, Honorable Speaker, the commitment which Honorable Sarah exuded as she took over office would certainly involve ensuring discipline among our men and women in uniform. Now that the minister in charge told us about order therein, I would like to use this opportunity to re-echo the need to call to order the few elements among our armed forces who paint a bad image of the rest by brutalizing citizens at every opportunity. We continue to see stories of human rights violations by our uniformed personnel something that should be in the past. On Saturday, 14th August, 2021, retired General Yoweri Kaguta Museveni Tibuhaburwa, in a televised address, warned security operatives against human rights violations and especially torture of suspects. That was an admission of this unacceptable behavior among some within the forces. Unfortunately, this warning was not followed up by stern action against perpetrators of the same. Right, Honorable Speaker, this criminal behavior continues to happen to citizens and especially supporters of the opposition and leaders too. Last week, my party leader, the Honorable Robert Chagulanyi Sentamu, was hit with a projectile by police and the military, causing an injury to his leg, only for police to say that he slid and fell as he entered his car. Stories upon stories of brutality have been told by suspects who get abducted using drones by plain clothed operatives, only for them to be produced in court with torture marks. In fact, some have been freed by courts because of that torture that was occasioned on them. As we mourn the passing of the Honorable Sarah Mateke, may we commit to not allowing illegalities within our forces because all of us are potential victims, regardless of our political shades, as we have seen in the recent past, right, Honorable Speaker and colleagues. Finally, I would like to re-echo our call for
for military courts to stop being used to persecute citizens with different political beliefs. As we have seen for young people like Olivia Lutaya and others who have spent over three years in jail, with the court martial denying them bail, and yet no evidence has been produced in court for their trials to progress, coming to four years for some of them. Right, Honorable Speaker, this is not right. And it should be condemned by all right-thinking Ugandans, regardless of our political beliefs. In fact, some of these people are constantly being coerced to plead guilty with a promise to be freed since there is no evidence against them to date. And due to desperation and years of uncertainty behind bars, it is easy for someone in such a precarious situation to give in. Also, there are families which four years later are still looking for their loved ones who were abducted to no avail. I would like to remind the Right Honorable Prime Minister who told the nation that John Bosco Chibalama was arrested and is in the hands of the state. Madam Prime Minister, his family is still waiting on you to have him produced in court or freed to return to his loved ones. I say all of this for God and my country. Thank you. May Thank the you Honorable so much. Sarah Mateke rest in eternal peace. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. I stand and rise to second the motion to pay tribute to our own Minister of State, former Minister of State for Defense, using the word listening to the clerk referring to Honorable Sarah as a former woman MP, former minister. It brings the reality back home that what we are left with is just a ceremony, that she's indeed gone. On 21st of March, this very year, the President of the Republic of Uganda and the Commander-in-Chief made a reshuffle. In that reshuffle, some people were dropped, some were retained, and some, only two, were elevated. I happen to have been one of those who were elevated to, to a cabinet position. So my position, which I was holding, of course when I saw it in the media, I didn't think it was true until the speaker confirmed it was true. Honorable Sarah Mateke was designated and deployed to replace me in the Minister of Defense. Now, the Minister of Defense is, uh, to many of you, you only know about guns. To many of you, you don't know what else is going on there. And, uh, and I, nobody should blame you. Neither was I better than you until I got there. That there is a lot that is going on in this country and it's managed through that ministry. Now, you get a civilian like Obot, like Sarah, Honorable Sarah, like Honorable Huda, to be the team leaders the best ministry to work in is the Minister of Defense because there is hierarchy and order. That's why anybody can come and work there if you are deployed. Because I'm not any, anybody special. I know how to cook, to cook a gun, but I am not a soldier. So when we were deployed there, Honorable Sarah Mateke came, pre-visit, before handover. She phoned me in the office where she was taking, because I had not taken over the other office. And uh, we both looked at each other, and she said, 
So about what do they do here? So what am I supposed to do? I said, in this same place, I asked the same questions. What could a lawyer like me do in this defense ministry? But thanks to President Museven for seeing what others may not see in some of us. Up to now, nobody can tell me the reason why he put Sarah there or he put her both. It's only him who knows. And even why he made the vice president, who is the vice president and the prime minister. Though everyone thinks they can be minister of defense and vice president. But so Sarah, I found a very peculiar thing about her, the calmness. Despite her size, she's a giant woman. She's not a small person. She was very consultative and so calm that even if you're a Japadola who raises the voice, you will come down to her level and you talk to her. Now, being appointed in the Ministry of Defense, in the hierarchy of Ministry of Defense, this is internal. She is the number two, the de facto number two person to me. She's the one who, I don't know, yes, she's the immediate person. Right, right honorable speaker, the the commitment to service by Honorable Sarah Mateke. Within one week, she was asking me, oh boy, you said there is a lot of work here. Got my desk, I come and read, read, there is nothing. Where is work? I said, I asked the same question. You first read some flimsy files, the past files. Me, I was given files by Honorable the late Mumacho Duogo. I could read to know what happens. Then within the next week, yes, work started flowing. And of course, we used to have our jokes. We used to sit behind myself, Honorable Nyakun, Diana, General David Mohozi, Honorable Kasolo here. It's not by choice. It's by appointment that ministers of state in the cabinet sit behind. We are not backbenchers. <laughs> so we used to, we were in our own comfort zone, a club. We could talk. And now she said, she told me, now you, you must be understanding how being a minister of state and now you're a minister, a full minister. We hope that our relationship here will be very good. I committed to that. I can tell you, given her commitment to service, we had the best working team. She was a team player. She was very steadfast and loyal. In the Ministry of Defense, there is a structure, command and control. Command in chief is there. For all of you, if you don't know, the only ministry which has the office of the president inside is the Ministry of Defense. So the commander in chief has an office there. So she's very, she never found any problem fitting in. Focused from day one on the purpose, direction, and the destination of the ministry and the government as a whole. A little wonder she had worked in government 
in Kisoro, personnel and assistant town clerk, probably she was able to understand how government operates. She would not raise issues which will not be raised. The general elders who are here and the, the senior officers here know. We sit in a TMC, top management meeting. Honorable Sarah was very articulate. She would ask questions. She would give guidance. And within a short time, by 7th of, of this month when she died, she had been involved in several international military defense diplomacy engagements, including on 7th, she was supposed to travel to Seoul for the defense, global defense event. On the same day she died. And that, you can only do that by delegating. You delegate somebody whom you know is not only smart, is not only loyal, but able and capable to execute the assignment at international level. That was Hone Boshara Matek. Hadi Mina was real. What you see is what you get. You see a lady she was a gentleman, he would say gentleman. Her demeanor was proper. How she dressed, you cannot ignore her when she came to the office. Or when whatever what your mind is pushing you to think. Members, she was please actually she was Mr. particularly Mr. When, when she came in, from my little experience of being a Minister of State in our position, I thought we needed to dedicate somebody to do the direct supervision of the construction of the military referral hospital. That assignment that through the TMC we delegated, I delegated her fully. And the last report was last week. Report full of wisdom and the way forward, as if she was going to die. She wrote what she wants to be, to be done. We never saw this coming. I looked forward to discussing her report with her and then with the TMC. She was also, we segmented the ministry in a way that for ease of supervision, sharing responsibilities, I did it and I signed her to monitor and supervise all engineers' brigade construction projects undertaken by engineers' brigade in the whole of from Masaka to Kisoro and Honorable Huda from Luero to Arua and of course Mugabite Esera. I also took this other side of the east. <laughs> you. So we were working as a team. This government has lost a committed minister. This government has lost a selfless minister. In the six months or so, there is no single scandal that we could attach to her name. Either defrauding fuel or doing what in the Ministry of Defense, that would be obvious. The consequences would be very dire. The person we are paying tribute to her, she would love to hear that she knew God in a personal way. She was a Christian without discriminating anybody else. 
she was very accommodative. And one time I asked her, do you really come from Chigezi? And she said, yes, I am a proud woman from Chigezi. Then she asked me, why do you ask? Then I said, the answer is obviously that Kigezi, some people use politics and religion in a in not very friendly way. And she told me she is playing the middle road. Our wish that we could emulate her. I want to thank Honorable Sarah Mateke for her dedicated service to this nation. As a person who worked with the children and the youth, when she came to the ministry, she posed the question, who is attending to the women of the soldiers, the spouses and the children? Can I get permission to engage? TMC agreed with her. Before she could start that, she's gone. I had been there for about two and a half years. I never had that in mind. She was like, she knows all the people who are not providing for their children in this South. Those who have children, <laughs> carelessly. She was very passionate that every parent should be responsible. And I know in this house, nobody was her client. So we shall miss our intervention on the spouses and the children of the armed officers, the, the, the uniformed men and women. We do not know, because she was yet to start after the events that we are having this month. We shall miss her greatly. And... Uh, I do not know, at 50, she's gone. In that ministry, I was about two, three years older than her. She was the same age with the CDF. We were, we were really basking on things that we are witnessing, a transition in our light, lifetime. Transition in such a way that how would you else term it? Term it, oh, say that Arnold Both from Tororo is a Minister of Defense. Another one from Kigezi, another one from West Nile. I do not know which other president would have made me a, president, a minister in defense. I don't know. When we know in that in this country, defense, we all know the critical role. Honorable Sarah, you played your role. You smiled with all of us. Thank you. The last time she came to my office was last, the other Tuesday. And she said she would not attend before Gulu. She said, I feel bad because I delegated her to go to the East African Community event in Nairobi. And then I had a Thanksgiving. So we had to discuss with her. She walked in, said, what do we do? Then I said, no, we shall delegate, delegate Honorable Huda not to go anywhere, but to go to Guru. And he said, I will come back on Friday, but I will come to, to the function in Tororo. So she came back on Friday and she traveled to Tororo. The last public event she attended in the East. Her words were all about God is good all the time. I didn't know that Sarah you meant that even today I should say God is good. Rest in peace. Thank you. To convene in a house
to bid farewell to a colleague who has just been sitting on the front bench. It is not an easy thing. The grief and sorrow have been evident since 7th September 2024, when the tragedy of the demise of the beloved colleague, the woman member of Kisoro district, and the minister of state passed on at uh, Mengo Hospital. And this took place at around 9 in the morning. Yesterday, during the memorial prayers, I recounted how I had to drive myself to Mengo Hospital to see how we could salvage Sarah's life. But when it is your time, it is your time. God's timing is never our timing. And I want to appreciate the unity of the members of parliament. Unity from executive and from judiciary on what happened and what is still happening. We want to really thank you on, on this. It's a painful reality that has to be accepted. Death is so cruel, indeed we are living in borrowed life. Today I liked what the preacher said, that all of us have borrowed life and we are living in borrowed life. Any time God can say, give it back to me. Honorable members, this is the fifth time that the 11th parliament convenes to pay tribute to fallen members. As you may recall, we lost then the right honorable speaker, Honorable Lanya Jacob, in March 2022. We lost Honorable Kabe Patrick in December 2022. Honorable Charles Engola Machidrogo in May 2023. Honorable Cecilia Ogwa in January 2024. And hardly 80 months, Sarah is no more. She is also gone. We need to pray for ourselves as an institution, as a country, for protection and favor from God. The Lord needs us and we need to seek for the Lord's guidance for us to be able to be here to serve humanity. Honorable members, we are all imperfect mortal beings whose final destiny is always death. It's therefore I therefore urge you to have love for each other. When you see what happened to Sarah, the people who were with Sarah a day before, you'd wonder, why would I have a grudge with anybody else? Because you don't know when your time is. Why would you be in wars over smaller things? Let's have love for each other. Let's be there for each other. Let's be each, other, each, each other's keeper. Because when you see what is happening, we need more of God's intervention. And I want, without preempting the tribute, the tribute motion and the debate, the death of Honorable Sarah has robbed this parliament. And this nation, she has robbed the family of Honorable Mateke, the people of Kisoro, and the people of Uganda. 
She was such a lovable girl, lovable lady, down to earth. A minister you'd approach any time. You don't even imagine she's a minister. She was always there for everybody. And her passion for children was too much. She had a passion for children. I don't know how many people she did not ever ask to join, to bring children to take to Metropolitan University. She gave scholarships in Metropolitan University. She really promoted the university. She has a very good track record, legislative record, and that can be traced from both the 9th Parliament and 11th Parliament, where she effectively represented the people of Kisoro in the 9th Parliament and served with a distinction on the East African Government Affairs Committee. Honorable members, as you may be aware, the effectiveness of a, a legislator can significantly be determined by the capacity of the debate, lobby, pers persuasion of members on those parameters. Honorable Sa Sarah Mateke excelled in that. As a minister, her commitment to the flight of young children, the youth, was evidenced in the passion with which she tabled the legislative business, legislative business for the social development sector in many ways. She became synonymous with the youth and the children. Her relocation to the Minister of Defense was there for no surprise. Given her excellent work in the youth and the children docket, she really had to be relocated to another tougher ministry. And we want to thank President Museveni for entrusting Sarah with such responsibility. We really want to thank him so much. Three major projects which were incomplete, notably the Kanya Mateke Bridge in Bufumbira North, which connected the Democratic Republic of Congo and the rehabilitation of uh, Buhosi Health Center too. As the construction of this bridge was taking place, it, there, there was also a men's ward at Nyarusiza Health Center 3. This was budgeted for, but then there was a shortfall of money and the, and the projects were ongoing. We budgeted for that money in the last financial year to complete the projects that were started, but unfortunately, the, it was, the money was removed, that, but the projects are still there. We want to request the Prime Minister that these projects that were left not completed, that you make a follow-up on them and see how we can have Sarah's legacy kept in the constituency. Honourable members, death is inevitable. It's a journey for all of us. The Bible in the second Samuel 14:14 14, 14 states, "For we will surely die, and uh, like water." spilled on the ground, which cannot be gathered again. And indeed, Sarah has died. She can never come back to her life again. Death is a bad reaper, always snatching the unripe fruits. Honorable Sarah has died at the time we needed her most. 
she was a team worker she was that uniting factor would never want to see any problem anywhere and that is the Sarah that we are paying tribute today I want to request members of parliament as we pay tribute to our sister let's pay tribute to the dignity because she was a dignified person she was really a dignified person her body will be brought here and after that we'll do the normal ceremonies but Honorable Sarah survived with the one son that is uh, Tugume Isaac who is somewhere I will be um, all we have to tell you as parliament that uh, the God we serve is a God of orphans is a father of orphans a mother of orphans and you, you will see you through keep your mother's name alive keep the name alive and be the person that your mother would always want you to be honorable members i want to thank all of you for coming i want to lastly pass on our condolence from members from parliament of uganda to the NRM fraternity, to the President of the Republic of Uganda, to the family of the Matekes, the people of Kisoro, the, the defense, and people of Uganda. I want to thank you and I say all this for God and my country.